So for part five, we're gonna look at electric hazards and how static electricity can be dangerous. This is the learn learning objective for this video lesson. And let's start. Static electricity can be dangerous because of one particular thing, because of discharge. Here I have an app and here I have John Travolta. And you're gonna see what happens when he is charged and how that can be harmful. Okay, so what happens here? When two insulators are rubbing against each other and you have friction, you, you can have a charge built up inside your body. This is especially true if you are wearing a specific type of fabric. Uh, for example, if you're wearing your baju kurong or cara uh, melayu, you are prone to this happening to you. And then suddenly, when you touch a metal object, for example, like this metal doorknob, the all the electric charges that is built up inside your body will then discharge and go into the metal Ouch. the metal object. And this is what we mean by discharge. And when this happens, it can hurt. And also this can lead to dangerous situations, which what we'll talk about today. The first thing we'll talk about is lightning. So lightning is basically a very large discharge that is naturally occurring on the earth. The flashes that you see are actually very large discharges of electric charges that build up in the clouds. The charges build up in the clouds due to friction between the water molecules in the cloud and the air molecules. So when you have a large cloud, what tends to happen is that the water molecules and the air molecules inside the clouds are moving against each other, they're hitting each other, there's a lot of friction happening, and because of that, charge can build up in the cloud. When the cloud is charged, what it can do is that it can ionize the air particles. So that means the air particles are usually they're usually neutral, there are molecules and atoms, but then because of the charge cloud, the air molecules become ions. So basically that means they become positive and negative charges. At some point, the air molecules will line up in this sort of pattern, in an alternative pattern of positive and negative charges. When you have this sort of pattern, this will create a pathway for the charges inside the cloud to go to the ground. Okay, so what charge objects tend to do, they want to make themselves neutral. They want to remove the excess charges from themselves as, as fast as possible. So when suddenly you have this sort of arrangement of ions in the air, so the charges will move through the ions and into the ground through this sort of pathway here. And this is where lightning comes from. The thing that you need to know about lightning is that they always aim for the highest conductor on the ground. Why is that? That's because what the charges like to do is they, they like to use the shortest path they can use in order to get to the ground and the shortest and easiest path. That's why they like to hit tall objects in order for the charges to go into the ground. This is why tall buildings have conducting rods on the top to provide a pathway for the lightning so that the lightning will not damage the tall building. So these conducting rods are earth and not connect connected to the other parts of the building. And so when lightning hits, hits the building, the lightning will hit this conducting rod and will safely go to the ground without damaging the building. Hence, it is very dangerous for us to swim in the open sea or play in an open field as we will be the shortest path for the lightning to discharge. So if you are a very tall person, then you're most likely to get struck by lightning, unfortunately. For the same reason, it will also be dangerous to hide under a tree during a thunderstorm because if the tree is the tallest thing in that area, then you can bet that the lightning will hit the tree. And if you are hiding under the tree, you'll be in danger. Another example where electric discharge can be dangerous is when you have a truck that is carrying oil or carrying flammable substances. A trailer carrying flammable liquids can have charges accumulating on them due to friction 
between the tires of the trailer and, and the road. So remember, so this truck is moving. So the tires are rubbing against the rod. The gears are rubbing against each other. There's a lot of friction. So there can be a lot of charge built up inside this truck itself. If a discharge suddenly occurs, it can cause a spark. So if there is a if there's discharge, it can cause a spark and ignite the flammable liquid and you can have an explosion. It is quite common to see trailers and trucks to have a metal chain at the rear and hanging close to the ground. This is to neutralize the vehicle by means of a thing. So if you see at the back of the truck, there's usually a metal chain or some sort of rope or something like that. This is so that any build-up charges can move through this chain and go, go to the ground safely without creating a spark and without igniting the flammable liquid. The third example where electric discharge can be bad is for electric equipment such as computer motherboards and hard drives can be easily damaged by electronic discharges. In order to protect them, the equipment is usually packaged in anti-static packaging. These packaging usually have a thin layer of metal film. This conducting film act as an electric shield for the components placed inside. Electrical appliances such as CD players and washing machines are also capable of electrostatic discharging. This is due to the fact that they have moving parts inside it that charge up due to friction. So have you been in a situation where you touch a wash washing machine and then you get electrocuted? or you touch a CD player or DVD player, and then you get electrocuted, that's because of electrostatic discharge. You know that inside these appliances, there are rotating parts, washing machine, that you have the barrel that's rotating, the CD players, you have the CD that is rotating, and because of that, there's friction. And when there's friction, there is charge built up. If the charge stays in the appliance, they will discharge when we touch the appliance. So because we are connected to the ground, so the charge inside the appliance will go through us and go to the ground and then you will have discharge and you'll get electrified. To avoid this, what these appliances have is that they are connected with a wire and this wire helps to earth the charges inside the appliances. So this wire is called the earth wire and the earth wire is usually inside the power cable and the power plug. We're going to talk about this in the future. Okay, so do, just to summarize, remember how discharge can happen when there's a lot of friction, the object can be electrostatically charged. That means there's a lot of charge built up inside the object. When the object meets with another neutral object, especially if that neutral object is connected to the ground, there will discharge happening and that can cause a lot of problems and that can be bad. Make sure you remember examples where Charging could be a problem. We looked at lightning. Second, we looked at discharge for vehicles carrying flammable liquids. The third thing that we looked at is protecting electronic equipment from electrostatic discharge. And then the fourth thing we looked at is appliances like CD players and washing machines that can be charged and how we use the earth wire in order to keep these appliances safe. Next topic, we're going to look at the uses of electrostatics.